Wow, that looks like a disaster. Well, it is, but anyway. I had to work on this today because the SSD seems to have failed. Uh, it'll still boot to this, but when it goes to do any kind of disk access, uh, it will disconnect itself from the SATA bus, and then, of course, all hell breaks loose. I haven't figured out whether it's the SSD or if the computer just doesn't like it, but I replaced it with a hard drive, and that seems to have got it working. Now I'm going to do this, because uh, I actually changed that, so I've got a dual gigabit Intel network card in there, because apparently CARP is too stupid to uh, work with mismatching interfaces, even though it really should. It shouldn't matter what the interface is, it should matter what the interface assignment is. But, I guess the interface matters, so... I'm gonna put an Intel card in this, and get rid of the, uh... Oh, whatever it is. The one that I was using for the PFSync interface. I just had to embark on a tape rescue mission. I think the belt must have broken. I did replace the belt, but it wasn't a proper replacement. It was much thinner than what it should have been, and uh, I guess it just was too thin, and the stress made it break. But we'll find out. I'll put the cover back on and flip it around, and we'll get the chance to see. And I had to get this back out, because I had to redo the heat sink, since it was overheating big time. I think the only real reason why it was overheating big time is because the thermal compound was all dried up. But, I might as well put it in a better heat sink anyway, even though it still uses these dumb plastic push pins. I had to fix a hard drive. Uh, apparently, I guess it doesn't like not running without the 3.3 volt, even though it worked fine before. Now it's not working. But uh, I switched it, so now it's got a 3.3 and it is working. Maybe it was just a bad connection, I don't know. I also had to replace this fan, uh, because... Clearly, as you can see, that's no good. I don't think this one is a whole lot better, but at least it doesn't grind and it will actually do something. And it's actually plugged into the board, which will allow me to eliminate the Molex splitter. So one less splitter in here. Oh, there goes that plan, because I have to replace this drive, evidently. So I had put this, which came out of the 6030X, my original 6030X, into the Toshiba Tekra 8000, so I could take the 10 gig drive that's in the Tekra 8000 and put that into another machine that needs a drive, but... Now I can't do that, so now I've got to find another drive um, in my spare pile somewhere. I guess to either put in this or to put in the other machine. This is what happens when the hard drive completely fails. Well, this is a different drive. I'm not really sure why people park up that far. You know, the front end is basically like eating those summer tires. But anyway, this was supposed to be sold yesterday, which is why it's sitting out. But, uh, it's probably my fault, actually, rather than the, uh, the person's fault. I didn't see them, and I didn't see their message that they were coming at 3.30, and I had to go and pick somebody up. By the time I got back, it was 3.40, so I probably missed them. Oh, well. I'll have to have a discussion about that, see if we can arrange a different time, or maybe that'll have to wait for somebody else to come get it. At some point, whenever that's going to happen, there's a lot of stuff that is in here that really kind of just needs to go. Too much stuff. Too much stuff indeed. That probably could have been thrown out, honestly. I hate to waste it, because it's, you know, if you clean it up, there's probably nothing wrong with it as a camera bag, but it's just kind of ratty looking, and you can get better ones. It's one of those faux leather ones. And, of course, the faux leather is falling apart. So this thing right here, 
uh, I have been promising a, an update video on for a long time and just have never made it. So I should probably do that. Considering it's the dead of winter and absolutely insanely dry in here, I've had to start using it again recently. And I guess it's a decent humidifier. It was able to get it from, you know, roughly 5% relative humidity in here to, you know, 11, 12%. Which I guess isn't that bad in the grand scheme of things. It's still not great. I would prefer it to be a lot higher. But for what it is, that's not bad. However, it's an absolutely terrible cooler because clearly it is not doing a very good job of keeping it cool in here. As you can probably very clearly see. Anyway, I don't know. These video logs have kind of become like a, a monthly thing as opposed to a weekly thing like they should be. You know, I cleaned up this floor last week, and you wouldn't even tell now. There's so much junk all over it. So, I guess that's going to be the thing that I deal with this weekend. Although I need to, uh, I don't know if I actually showed this TV. I think you might know about the Quasar, the 1977 Quasar I picked up. But this is actually a 1988 Emerson that I also picked up for free. But this one's cool, because it is actually a portable TV that you can power off of DC, which is good because the AC power transformer is bad. So, when you use that, you just get a loud buzz and the screen does some weird stuff. Normally that's indicative of a high voltage problem, but if you plug it in with the DC, it's perfectly fine. So I think there's something arcing in that transformer. I know in my luck, it's probably like inside, it's internal to the transformer, and I'm not rewinding that, so... I am going to have to redo this dial, though, because the dial doesn't really work. Can you see it? It's not going beyond, uh, what is that? Like about channel 50 UHF, a little bit below channel 50, probably more like channel 48 UHF, uh, which is useless. I need a channel 3 VHF in order to really do anything with it. So, it'll need some work. Oh, do I ever love it when things don't work. This is the second DVD I've tried. The first one will boot, but it stops trying to load a file, uh, complains about it. I don't know why, because it verified fine. This one won't even boot at all. It's just sitting here doing nothing. So now I'm going to have to get a third one going. Isn't that exciting? I swear, nothing that I ever work on can work right the first time. It's always got to be some kind of a mess. Yeah, this video log's been going on since about the middle of January. It's now almost the end of February, so I should probably wrap it up. Um, and I'm going to do that by saying that there is... I mean, there already has been. I did upload one of the driving videos, or the only driving video that I've made to date. I did upload that, so there's going to be some new content that I'm going to mix in with the old stuff from last year. Because I have it, I might as well mix it in, you know, get some of the new stuff going where it makes sense. I don't want things to get too chronologically confusing. So, I'm trying to avoid stuff like that. But, if it's not tied to anything else, like for example, if it's not a computer upgrade that was performed after another upgrade that's got a video, then I'm probably going to upload it sooner. I've reorganized some of the uh, some of the videos to upload, and the reason why I've done that is because I've recorded a lot of computer videos, and I want to kind of break it up and get some more of the other kind of content up and not just computer videos all the time. So there is that. Uh, there's also the fact that I've redone a lot of videos to be in 720p 60fps, which, you know, I, I don't know how much of an improvement that really is. I guess we'll have to find out, because 720p is not high definition anymore, according to YouTube, so it seems to be processed exactly the same as the standard definition stuff, so it's just as low quality as the standard definition stuff now, which is kind of ridiculous. But I figure at the very least, for the people with theater screens as monitors, it won't be upscaled nearly as much, being a 720p video as opposed to a 480i video. So, and it'll be 60 frames per second. At least in theory. I still haven't determined whether or not the video files that come out of my 
importing program are actually compatible with QTGMC in a way that doubles the frame rate. I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to do some more investigation on that. If it's not just 30 FPS with frames doubled to get to 60 FPS. As far as videos are concerned, otherwise, uh, you know, I've got that stack of laptops over there. A lot of Macintosh videos. Uh, one of them in that pile, actually, I had fixed up in a video, and I don't think I'm going to end up keeping it because the display is just way too far gone. It's 170. It's got major tunnel vision problems. Probably the worst I think I've ever seen. Um, and people I've spoken to about it say that, yeah, no, that's the worst they've ever seen. So it's, it's, it's gone. I'm probably just going to end up selling that machine. I took the hard drive out and put it in the 165 because the 165 needed a hard drive. But uh, that'll all show up in a video eventually. Other things, I ended up trading a Mavica for this, which you can just barely see. This is a Kodak Easy Share, or Easy Scare. <laughs> um, it's a relatively modern camera. It's in, you know, decent condition. I'll have to give it a try and see what it can do and compare it to my Pentax. Oh, uh, my, you know, the, the Pentax camera that I've got. Unfortunately, it does not take AA batteries. It's got a lithium battery, so... Hopefully that's in good shape. Speaking of lithium batteries, uh, my Canon HF200 over here, uh, this thing, that, uh, unfortunately, the battery, which I realized is actually an aftermarket battery, uh, is no good. It will no longer take a charge at all. So I'm going to have to find a replacement for that. The big one that I'm sure affects... A great deal of my audience, uh, the big winter storm that took place last week, uh, there will be a video about that that I'm going to have to finish. That'll probably come out tomorrow relative to the upload of this video because that should be the next one that I do. But uh, needless to say, a quick little spoiler alert, I guess, for that video. The official snowfall total for this area was 19.6 centimeters, I think, so basically just shy of 20 centimeters. But that's reported at the airport, and in this area, we always tend to get more than what the airport gets. I went out and took a yardstick measurement, and I would estimate, I didn't take any measurements before the storm, but we probably got closer to a foot here, as opposed to the 20 centimeters they got at the airport. I mean, even 20 centimeters is a pretty decent snowfall uh, for one snowfall, so... Of course, that being said, there are definitely places that got it a lot worse uh, and that are still dealing with it. Uh, places like Texas, where most of the power grade was knocked offline and they're still dealing with that. 